so far right there's a uh there's a historical figure who oh. many people don't know about no. and then he's a he's a he's a his impact is so immense this is kind of sad but we're gonna teach the people today please speak about hubert harrison all right hubert harrison was a prominent you can't even call him a civil rights activist you could call him a thinker, an organizer, uh, an orator, a writer. I mean, this guy, the philosopher, philosopher he, he was like the traditional polymath is what the term is, right? He knew a lot about a lot of different things, spoke different languages, could read in different languages. <laughs> I mean, the, but the thing is, nobody talks about this man. Nobody talks about him. He was um, a prominent figure in the American socialist movement in the early 20th century. Now he broke away. Now what people, when, when people say these terms or use these organizations or movements like socialism or capitalism, they think that they, they, were, they were radical about everything, right? They're radical about class, they're radical about, uh, about race, they're radical about gender, and that was not the case. Harrison found out during his time in the socialist movement that they were not as uh, progressive about race as they talked or he thought they should be. So he broke away from that. He started his own movement, you know. Um, he was a very influential on Marcus Garvey. He was very influential on other uh, black radical thinkers in the early uh, 20th century. Um, he was a person who started organizations. He was a, he's a leader in a movement that was called the New Negro Movement. Um, he started a, a publication called The, the Voice. Um, he was a very influential writer, and when Garvey started the UN, UNIA, he was a very prominent writer in that movement. Um, so his 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 role um, in the early Negro movement is 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 immense and touch a, a, a bunch of different areas: the arts, literature, education. Uh, he would start these lyceums where where groups of men and women would get to, together and really self educate and read and debate and talk. Um, you know, some people go to New York now and it's, it's, it's as prominent as it used to be decades ago, but like the, the street corner preaching and those who would give lectures on the corner. He was an early uh, proponent of that and was great at it and would captivate. You see, the thing about Harrison that people have to recognize too, he was very concerned about reaching the masses, not only giving the message, but learning from the masses as well, right? Where organizations like the NAACP were kind of middle class focused, or he felt like the socialists. Uh, organizations were more concerned with the middle class or even the CPUSA, the communist movement, they were concerned with the middle class. He was always about those who are overlooked, the masses. Uh, not only again, what he could teach them, but what he could learn from them as well. Um, and that's who his uh, preaching and, and speeches were directed to. Now, he's problematic for a lot of p persons because even today, because there are two things he was against that the African-American community is still very ambivalent about today. Number one, capitalism. He was anti-capitalist. Number two, he's anti-church, anti-religion period, right? He was hardcore science, reason. He didn't want anything to do with religion, right? If it couldn't be proved by logic, he didn't want to touch it. And that made him somebody who was um, not very popular. Another thing that Harrison has to be credited for, what made him different from a lot of mainstream leaders, is that he did not want to take support from the white community for his organizations, right? He wanted to be black, uh, supported by the black community, he wanted to focus on black issues and that kind of central part too as well. But yeah, overlooked figure, uh, who was very influential in a lot of people who came. J. A. Rogers, A. Philip Randolph, Marcus Garvey, well, Rogers and Randolph, they all they if you read their writings, they talk about how brilliant he was and what a great speaker and orator he was. Uh, but if you read his writings, there's a collection of writings that are available, you get a book of them. I mean, man, he's, a, he's, a, he's everything. <laughs> he wrote about everything, talked about everything, but greatly influential and, and overlooked. Right. Question I have now. We spoke about the influence, right? Yeah. Some people argue that Marcus Garvey pirated his well, ideas. Harrison said that. Harrison <laughs> said that. <laughs> Harrison said, he said everything good about the UNIA he took from the Liberty League as well. As well. He took from the Liberty League. Please elaborate on that. What are your views on that? Well, I mean, Harrison was, um, comp comp I think Marcus Garvey took from Harrison mainly was his race consciousness peace, you know, black pride, uh, trying to uh, uplift the black race in terms of his consciousness about not being um, the inferiority complex that many uh, African-Americans were experiencing at that time. But he was also an internationalist. Um, he was looking at making connections, for instance, between the Caribbean community 
in the African African American community in this country where uh, there's been a, a, a rift or a wedge between those communities throughout history. Um, another thing that he uh, was focused on is that he did not believe that African Americans had the role of going to redeem Africa. He believed that Af if Africa was going to change, it was going to be on what Africans did for themselves. All right. Now, he differed from Garvey. Some of it was personal. Some of it was philosophical. He thought Garvey was an egomaniac. <laughs> he didn't like how Garvey handled his finances. Um, he thought that Garvey inflated a lot of the things that he was talking about when he gave his speeches and so forth. So he broke away from Garvey after a period of time as well. Um, another part uh, that they differ with, Harrison was, was not a really a firm believer in some like a vanguard, a leadership that was going to bring black people out of their condition. Um, he was a believer in the masses doing for themselves, a community doing for itself. So he was not a fan of, you know, um, the boys is talented tip. Like it's gonna be the educated elite of the African American community that are gonna change things. He didn't believe in that. He didn't believe in Garvey's view that, you know, some leader was gonna come out, again, the Black Messiah thing. Some Black Messiah was gonna come in and change the conditions of African Americans. And he saw Garvey, I think he saw it as a little dangerous that Garvey thought he was kind of some Messiah figure who was gonna lead people back to, to Africa to, to, uh, to change their condition. Um, so they're different on many things, but again, he himself said that if there's anything good about the UNIA, uh, Garvey got it from me. And again, the organizations that he started, the Liberty League and the voice as far as the paper. And by the way, the Liberty League, I think, was the first mass black radical organization in this country. And Hubert Harrison started that. All right. So they had their differences. But again, he, the, the influence that he had on various leaders was uh, immense. And why do you think history has kind of left them out of the page? Every, again, everything that we value in this country is being important. The two major things, the capitalist that the, the value of capitalism and the religion, he was against both of those. Uh, so he's not appealing in any way. Uh, he did not, again, seek support from the white community. And he was against many of the leaders that have been upheld throughout history. He was against uh, Booker T. Washington and the Tuskegee, Tuskegee machine. He was not a fan of Du Bois. For instance, I don't know if you, uh, some of you uh, or people watching this may know, Du Bois uh, wrote this piece called Clothes and Ranks where he was trying to get a job with the government. And he was basically telling the African-American community to, uh, I think he's, the, the line he was like, put aside your petty grievances or something, like overlook all the racism and all the torment to support the war effort. This was what this was all about. And Harrison basically said that because Du Bois uh, wrote that piece, he's unfit to be a leader in the African-American community, right? Because the, the compromise, we're going to overlook all this and support the war, basically because you want to get a, <laughs> you try to get a government job, whatever the case may be. Um, and another thing, he was immensely, immensely critical of a lot of people and a lot of philosophies. And that rubs people law in the wrong way. Um, so I think that's another reason why. I mean, he wasn't really supportive of a lot of the uh, movements that we, we support today. I thought were so grand back in the early 20th century.